Many pilots prefer to fly as high as practical for two very good reasons. First, an airplane flown at higher altitudes is more efficient and consumes less fuel for a given airspeed compared to flight at lower altitudes. Second, you have a better chance of avoiding weather hazards and turbulence by flying in the relatively smooth air above convective weather systems. There are two ways to safely and legally climb into the flight levels. Provide supplemental oxygen to the crew and passengers, or fly a pressurized airplane. While the individual components of a pressurized airplane are fairly complex, the basic concept of how the system functions as a whole is fairly simple. The cabin, flight deck, and sometimes the baggage compartments are incorporated into a sealed vessel capable of retaining air under pressure that's higher than the outside atmospheric pressure. In a piston-powered airplane, air is pumped into the cabin from the engine's turbocharger, while turbine aircraft use bleed air from the compressor section of the engine. Air is then released from the cabin at a rate regulated by outflow valves to maintain the desired pressure. For now, we'll mainly focus on the pressurization system in piston-powered airplanes, which starts with the engine's turbocharger. A turbocharger consists of two parts, an exhaust-driven turbine and a compressor, which is connected to the turbine by a shaft. While the exhaust is only used to spin the turbine, the compressed air from the other side goes to the intake system of the airplane to maintain manifold pressure and also to the pressurization system. How is this compressed air used to pressurize the cabin? Well, after it leaves the compressor, it goes through a sonic venturi to slow the velocity of the air. From there, it goes to a heat exchanger, or intercooler, where the heat created by compression is dissipated. Even with this process, the compressed air is warmer than ambient when it goes into the cabin, which has been sealed as tightly as possible. Most systems incorporate two outflow valves located at the rear of the cabin to control the air leaving the pressure vessel. The primary outflow valve is set to maintain the maximum allowable pressure in the airplane, referred to as maximum differential. This valve is typically connected to a controller in the cockpit. The second valve is considered a safety valve and is set slightly above the maximum differential and acts as a relief valve should the primary outflow valve fail. Next, let's look at how a modern pressurization system is operated by the pilot, using the Piper Malibu as an example. At sea level, the ambient atmospheric pressure is approximately 14.7 pounds per square inch, or PSI. Climb up to 24,000 feet, and the ambient pressure drops to 5.7 PSI. The goal of the pressurization system is to increase the cabin pressure to a higher value than ambient when flying at higher altitudes, so that the occupants feel as if they were at a lower altitude. The difference between the ambient pressure and cabin pressure is called differential pressure. Every pressurized airplane is certified with a maximum allowable differential pressure. For the Malibu, the maximum differential pressure is 5.5 psi. Turbine airplanes typically are built to handle a higher max differential pressure, upwards of 8 or 9 psi, which allows them to fly high into the flight levels and still maintain a cabin altitude between 6,000 and 8,000 feet. To put this into practice, let's say you're flying the Piper Malibu at 24,000 feet, where the ambient pressure is 5.7 psi. If the system pressurizes the airplane to the max differential of 5.5 psi, Add this to the ambient pressure of 5.7 to get a resulting pressure in the cabin of 11.2 psi. Looking at the chart, that represents a cabin altitude of just below 8,000 feet. This also means you could fly at a lower altitude and maintain sea level pressure in the cabin. For example, looking at the standard atmospheric chart again, if you flew at 12,000 feet in the Malibu, with the cabin fully pressurized, Take the 5.5 psi cabin pressurization plus the ambient pressure of 9.4 psi. This would result in the approximate value of sea level pressure, which would be felt in the cabin. The operation of cabin pressurization is fairly simple, as most systems are automated. 
Each system will have a cabin pressure controller, which the pilot uses to set the cabin altitude based on the phase of flight. In the Malibu, you would set the controller to 500 feet above the planned cruise altitude using the inner scale, which then also shows the corresponding cabin altitude on the outer scale. Most systems also include a rate controller, which allows the pilot to adjust the approximate rate the cabin will climb or descend. You won't see a feet per minute scale on these knobs. But in the Malibu, for example, the 9 o'clock position equates to approximately 500 feet per minute. There are typically three pressurization instruments provided to pilots to monitor the status of the system. The current altitude of the cabin, the climb or descent rate of the cabin, and the differential pressure. The Malibu displays these digitally on the G1000 MFD. This information may also be displayed on a round mechanical dial, with the outer needle displaying cabin altitude and the inner needle showing cabin differential. For the planned flight to 24,000 feet, set the controller to approximately 24.5 on the inner scale before takeoff. You'll see that the outer scale reads that the cabin altitude will be about 7,500 feet when it crews. The system will then regulate the amount of air exiting the cabin through the outflow valves during the climb to slowly pressurize the cabin. We're now level at 24,000 feet, and the pressurization instruments show the cabin altitude is approximately 7,500 feet, with a differential pressure of around 5.4 psi. Most systems also include a warning system to get your attention if the cabin altitude climbs above 10,000 feet, which would direct you to the airplane's emergency checklist. When it comes time for the descent, set the elevation of the landing airport in the controller plus 500 feet. So, for example, if you were flying into St. Augustine, Florida, which is located at sea level, you would set the controller to approximately 500 feet on the outer scale. During the descent, the system will regulate the outflow valve to depressurize the cabin at a slow, comfortable rate. Even with tight door seals, all airplane cabins leak some air. The older they get, the more they leak. The next time you ride on an old airliner, listen to the hissing noises around the cabin door. That's air leaking out. If the leak rate exceeds the excess in the supply of bleed air, then the airplane would not be able to maintain the maximum differential. An airplane has to have a stronger structure and thicker windows to withstand the pressure differential. There's also some equipment involved, mainly the heat exchanger, the outflow valves, and the controller. While it may seem complicated at first, most pressurization systems are easy to manage and allow you to fly high into the smoother air while maintaining comfortable conditions for the pilots and passengers.